What's up guys and welcome back to another EVE Online video. Today I want to do an in-depth guide to uh, manufacturing uh, and specifically in this case Tech 3 manufacturing. Uh, I live in wormhole space um, and so while I'm here I like to build the occasional Tengu and its associated subsystems. So this beauty here, um, really strong if you're not aware, I mean you should be, but it's a Tech 3 cruiser. Um, and it's an incredibly strong uh, ship and yeah tech 3 manufacturing has its own sort of special chain it's exclusively um, all the resources and everything exclusively come from wormhole space uh, you can't harvest them in known space at all um, so as I live in wormhole space I thought hey why not build some tech 3 ships and um, my choice, my preference is the Tengu, um, so I build the Tengus and, and their associated subsystems. Now if you don't know what I mean by subsystems, um, just very quickly without uh, going into detail because this isn't a fitting uh, video, this is about manufacturing. Um, where Tech 3 ships differ from all the other ships is you know you have your normal high, medium, lows and rigs. But then you also have these subsystem slots here, which basically completely impact how your ship is set up. So, you know, this specific subsystem adds two mid slots with a whole load of other traits to do with velocity and things. Um, or you could go for, you know, chassis optimization, which instead adds. Uh, a low slot and a mid slot instead of two mid slots, for example, right? So these are these are exclusive to Tech Threes, uh, destroyers and cruisers, um, and they're sort of built in the same way. And so, and if you want to fly a Tech Three cruiser, uh, you have to fit subsystems. So like it won't let me build assemble this ship without subsystems. So in my opinion, there's not much point in building. The ships without the subsystem so that I do both and the purpose of this video is to be able to give you a full end-to-end -end on how you do that uh, how complicated is it um, where can you find the resources there will be links to other videos about um, how you go about harvesting those resources because it would be way too much detail for a single video so there'll be links dotted throughout that you can go and uh, explore to find out how you harvest the materials um, but we'll we'll do it all the way through so it's quite a long process um, it's going to involve invention um, and then obviously a whole series of manufacturing chains um, and yeah like I'm going to show you how to do it with one uh, a single character we're going to talk about the skills uh, we'll do the skills first actually um, but we'll do the full pipeline uh, all the way through so as I said we'll do the skills first so it as you'd expect this is tech 3 this is not simple and therefore the barrier to entry is pretty high so I actually I put together a skill plan like this character Wad is he's pretty old he's got a lot of skill points um, I think he's over 120 million now um, and so I put together, like I was already most of the way through the skill plan, but when I decided to start doing Tech 3 manufacturing, but I put together the plan, uh, that's the wrong one, sorry, um, I put together the plan and obviously I could already do it, it was already built. So what I've done is I've exported this plan and taken it to one of my alts that has effectively zero industry skills and so that we could see how long uh, it would really take so if I open up our skill plans here's the Tengu manufacturing one 145 days she's got no implants or anything in she's a clean pod um, without any remapping so uh, let's have a quick look at her, augmenta um, her stats it's just straight 20 across the board and 19 these are the default things so obviously you can um, specialize it uh, if need be but I'm just trying to give you an indication of how long these the queue is and how expensive it is. Um, so yeah, this Tengu manufacturing, this is the minimum skills required to do to build a Tengu and assemble the subsystems. 
uh, all the way through. So we've got 145 days here. It's a long old queue, lots of skills in it. Most of them are science. Um, and the only ones that um, Stephanie has are uh, mechanics up to four and industry one. And she's also got jury rigging in here up to three. And graviton physics one for some reason. Um, you can see she's working on rigging at the moment, which is why jury rigging has gone in there. Otherwise, none of them. And it's 145 days. Basically, it's you start with mechanics, work your way through mechanics and engineering, if I unhide, there we go. Oh, okay, sorry, so oh, there's also science in there, which is why it looks quite so full. Uh, oh, and a whole lot more, power grid management, CPU management. <laughs> so if you, okay, I didn't actually realize that. So if you go from scratch, it's even longer. So that's another, like, let's, let's just call it five days. Uh, 10 days, no, nope, sorry, yeah, 10 days, 15 days, let's call it 15 more days, so it's 160 days to do this without any implants, so not a small barrier to entry, um, starting with mechanics and science, they're basic ones, you start with them most of the way through, mechanics and science, um, and then <clears throat> obviously taking it industry to five as well that's unsurprising um we're talking about manufacturing jobs so got to take that to five mechanical engineering i think is a science um and so that's got to go up to four then you've got the advanced constructions you have to take some even though you're doing medium ship you have to take small ship to four before you can unlock medium ship construction um but this is okay so if you can build Tech 3 cruisers, you can build Tech 3 destroyers. Um, and at that point, that's all f for Tengu. And then you need to get to Kaldari Starship Engineering 5. It, once you reach here in the skill plan, you can build the Tengu hulls. So down to Kaldari Starship Engineering 5, that's Tengu hulls. So actually not too bad. It's a few 30-day skills, but you know. And then all the rest, all this science, is all for um, the subsystems. So research, power grid management, fives, uh, graviton physics to four, jury rigging to five. That's not that important, obviously. High energy physics to four, plasma physics to four, CPU management to five, nanite engineering to four, <laughs> electromagnetics to four, metallurgy to four, and then a bunch of them to one. Um, and then also each subsystem has its own technology and uh, you know we're only taking this to one to do the manufacturing if you're then going to fly them you want these higher um, uh, required for so you, uh, you only need level one to actually unlock them yeah um, so yeah quite a lot of skills and it's not just training time uh, if you buy them at list price, uh, you're talking 200, and, sorry, 275 million, 276 million to buy all the skill required skill books at list price. So, not a small barrier to entry at all. Um, I don't know if I can share these outside of game, so. If you watch this and you are interested and you like the skill plan, um, reach, out, reach out to me in game. I am um, same in game name as YouTube name. I'm Wad Andras. So reach out to me and I will do my best to share the skill plan with you to make sure that everyone is capable of doing this. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I wanted to mention. Not a small barrier to entry at all. Um, 160 days of skill training if you've got a fresh clone and um, so that's nearly six months right and uh, 270 million isk to buy the skill books before you can even get started with any of it so <laughs> yeah so pretty complicated and then the actual build path sort of reflects that as well um, so now that we've got skills out the way We'll start with 
manufacturing process. The video is going to assume a basic level of how EVE industry works. So I'm not going to go into super detail about the various manufacturing windows and research and that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, uh, I'll do a bit, but there's assumed a level of, of knowledge. So I want to build a Tengu. I need a Tengu blueprint, right? That's how manufacturing works. And if we, you know, I want a Tengu. Lots of characters. Here's my Tengu. I want industry. I need a Tengu blueprint. Fine. If you're in industry, there'll be a whole load of stuff you don't recognise. None of this, like, doesn't need any normal minerals or materials. Like, what's this? Right. A whole load of stuff we don't recognise, but we'll come to that in a second. First thing, how do I bu how do I find how do I buy where do I get a Tengu blueprint? They don't exist on the market. You can't buy Tech 2 or Tech 3 blueprints on the market um, anymore. I actually, actually have no idea if you could ever buy Tech 3 blueprints, uh, BPOs, but uh, Tech 2 BPOs were at one stage on the market, like, you know, we're talking like 15 years ago. Um, they were seeded. And now you can buy them on contracts for, for tens of billions. Tech 3 BPOs, I have no idea if they exist. The only way I know of, of getting a Tech 3 BPO, is by inventing an ancient relic. So, ancient relics, if again we search, I have some, but uh, just so, so you can do this yourself. Uh, it doesn't come up that way. Okay, interesting. In which case, I will go into my horrendously organised hangar and you got these gold, uh, yellow or gold items up here. These are ancient relics. So if I just go to this one. So, oh, they've changed the name. Okay, they're, they're now sleeper hull relic. Sleeper relics. Sleeper hull relic. Sleeper offensive relics. They used to be called ancient relics. I, I wasn't aware they changed the name to. But that makes them harder to search for because presumably if I type in sleeper relic. Nothing, so you have to be very specific. Um, but basically, these are these are how you get um, are how you get. What am I trying to say? The blueprints. You need to find sleeper relics. Uh, how you do that? Um, how you find sleeper relics in game? They are found in in wormhole space, as mentioned, uh, specifically in sleeper relic sites which are hacking sites, but they are defended by sleeper rats. Um, I'll put, I've will put i got a link to a couple of videos which will pop up in the top right uh, as I'm talking at the moment, um, where I show different ways you can go about doing that. Um, the important thing to note is uh, these are you need specific ones for whether you're going to do the Tengu hull or whether you're going to do the Tengu subsystems. Um, the subsystems you can get from uh, any sleeper uh, relic site, they, which I demonstrated with my uh, how to clear a site and then hack it in my with a rattlesnake um, video. Uh, but if you want the hull ones, they're only from high class sites or higher class sites, like the C4 or the C5, um, where I've done the Ninja Stratios in a C5. Um, they are only found from the abandoned Talakan battleships, which you'll see in that you'll see in that video. I'm not going to go into any more detail, but you need these are how you get the blueprints. You take a wrecked or a malfunctioning or intact hull section, and you invent it. Uh, just like you would with a blueprint, if you want to create a Tech 2 blueprint, you take a blueprint copy and you invent it and you get your Tech 2 blueprint, as demonstrated here, invent it, Cerberus. You do the same thing with Ancient Relics, take them, invent them, and you can get your blueprint. So what I will do 
is we're going to, as, as mentioned, we're going to go through this end to end. So I will uh, take my ancient relics out to where I do my invention process and we will, uh, you'll rejoin me as we're setting off the invention and we talk through the different uh, chances of success. Um, and you do this for both um, for the hulls. So specifically you need hull section for the Tech 3 cruisers. If you're going to build uh, Tech 2, sorry, Tech 3 destroyers, then you need small hull section. And then the others, the armor, um, nanobots, the power cores, and the weapon subroutines, and the thruster power sections, they each represent a subsystem type. So there's power subsystem, ar armor subsystem, thruster subsystem, and weapon subsystems. Uh, and we'll go and invent them as well. So yeah, I'll see you over where I do my inventions. Okay, so I'm out in high sec uh, with my sleeper relics and other stuff that I need for invention. Uh, and we're ready to go. Um, the reason I'm out in high sec is, um, like all things in industry, uh, for invention you need um, a specific facility type installed in your structures and we um, have very little need for it so we don't have uh, it installed in our wormhole so I need to bring my stuff out to ISEC when I want to do this um, and you, you just want to find a facility that you're happy with um, that has invention enabled uh, there's a whole load of it. like again I'm not going to go into too much detail about how like this system works but um, I've chosen Biz, I don't know how to pronounce that, Bizeba, Bizeba, um, which is because it was relatively near my exit. I've got my thing set to within 10 jumps, so when I exit a wormhole, I can see everything that's within 10 jumps. And it's got, it's an Asbel, so it's bonus, 20% um, bonus, um, but also it's got a super low um, system cost index, which is the main thing that drives the price of running the um, jobs and then the invention tax so you'll see when we go through this like the, the price of doing everything should be super super low uh, but anyway so I'm out here with everything I need um, you will notice so I'm going to start with the hull um, I think I can't remember if I mentioned earlier this I'll be honest with you it's a couple of days later now that I'm out here um, but I can't remember if I mentioned it, but there are three different types of um, uh, sleeper relic for each function. So you can get intact hull sections, you can get malfunctioning hull sections, and you can get wrecked hull sections. Um, and the reason that's important is the the like the more intact it is. So in that scale that I just in that order I just mentioned. Um, that determines the probability of it actually being successfully invented. So if you've got intact stuff, it's really quite expensive. Um, you know, each one of these is 50 million. Um, I mean, a good example here is I've got an intact thruster section, 10 million, whereas the malfunctioning is only 3 million, 3.5 million. That's the sort of ratio. But anyway, um, let's create some Tengu blueprints. So I'm going to open the intact hull section in the industry. Let's go to the invention tab, it's the only one it should allow you to use. So go to the invention tab and you'll see what's required. In this case we need plasma physics data cores and mechanical engineering data cores. I've got them with me as you can see in here. Um, and then you then have to choose. So it's the same process for any of the four Tech 3 cruisers. So you have to go to here and choose which one you want to build. So I want a Tengu blueprint so that opens this up um, and you can see if we run this without anything in here we have a 35-36% uh, chance that we'll successfully run and we'll end up with a 20 run blueprint um, with these efficiencies. I'm not too worried about the efficiencies but the number of runs and the success probability is quite big. 
So you can see, like, that's a lot. You just do this once, and you can build 20 Tengus from it if you're successful. But we can increase and play with these numbers by adding certain optional items. So, for example, the attainment, like, it's described what happens here um, with the probability modifier and the max ride modifier and things. Uh, so if I go for like an attainment to crypto, for example, there's now a 65% chance of success, and I can get 24 runs out of it, which is which is pretty nice. Um, attainment to cryptos aren't cheap, but it's only two million a run. So you know, 2.8 million of input. This is actually 50 million, but there's a 65% chance I'll be able to build 24 tenkus, um, and I've got. Uh, two. So unfortunately, you can't. You can each um, sleeper relic only allows you to use one run. So even though I have two sleeper relics, I can't run two runs on the same job. It will take up two of my. Um, and by me, it'll take up two of my uh, science jobs, which is fine. Um, and obviously, you can increase the number you do with skills. But anyway. Um, so I'm going to set this running once, and I'm also going to run it again because I don't want to have to keep coming out of where I'm supposed to do this, and so I can potentially, um, I could potentially have 68 runs, uh, sorry, 48 runs at the end of this. And now I'm going to do the same for the um, subsystems as well. Uh, but one thing I did want to mention that like you know it doesn't take that long it's only sort of 40 minutes so what I tend to do is on an evening where I'm gonna do this I come out and I just spend a bit of time in high sec um, you know do a bit of exploration or mission running or market stuff and then come back and pick these up um, so I just spend a, like an hour or so out here um, but anyway now let's go with the armor subroutine this is it like even it's the same thing but slightly more complicated because this time there's the four factions but each subsystem has three different types for each faction so you've got 12 to choose from so you need to be careful that you choose the one that you really want i want covert reconfiguration for the tengu so we want to build that so you select it and then again check the probability of success and the number of runs and then decide what you want to throw in for it so you know, could go symmetry but I'm not too bothered about time efficiency on this optimized attainments even better um, but I'm gonna go just um, attainment and I'm gonna set up how many can I run uh, so I'm just gonna set up two jobs I've got three blueprints we're gonna set up two jobs so that um, I can set up two of each of these, and that's all ten of my science jobs. Um, so 50% chance of success, so hopefully one of these will work. It is of course possible that one won't. Uh, that's just, in, like, you know, it's definitely possible that that, that can happen. Um, so then moving on to the power core, my functioning power cores, um, and we want uh, augmented graviton for me, but obviously build whatever you want. So be careful to select it. Attainment is what I want. And you see the cost is super low. Um, it all comes from the system cost index primarily. And it's like super, super, super low here. Run, run. And I'm going for weapons. And I want accelerated ejection bay. Oh, worth mentioning that the data cores we need are changing um, as we go through. So that's why I've got all of these different types. Um, and you get the data cores. So you get the relevant data cores by running the um, sleeper data hacking sites. So you get these from the sleeper relic hacking sites. Get these from the sleeper data hacking sites. Um, and you don't have to, like, you can get them from any difficulty level. Um, it's not a biggie. So if you are trying to do this, like, solo without expensive ships, then go in, clear some C1 and C2 sites, you can just go and hack them. Um, but if you want to take on some bigger stuff, then 
you can check out the same videos and do the same stuff that I did for um, the relics. Um, and these guys uh, come from regular hacking sites, not just in wormhole space, but anywhere. Um, you can get them uh, from data hacking sites anywhere in New Eden. Um, so uh, start that, start that, and then last two. I'm going to go. I had an intact thruster, so I'm going to set it up to increase my chances again. What do I want? Your catalyst, I think. Containment. Run that. And same thing for this one. Containment. Cat uh, catalyst. Run that. Okay. And that's it. So now I've got all of my subsystems and my tank and my tangu hulls in production and in 35 minutes I will know how many of them have worked because as mentioned like there is a probability that they won't right so this this job 64% chance of success so hopefully we're gonna have both of these succeed the others are at the 50% mark so we're hoping that we get at least one but we might not I don't know why that one's lower um, so just quickly you can see it here as well as the malfunctioning and intact having a chance on having an impact on the chance of probability of success as you can see between these two 50% chance of success 60% chance of success also the number of runs so we double the number of runs with the chance of success which is nice um, but yeah so that's that we will see how we, whether we're successful and come back to these and bring them back into the whole the blueprints when we're done. See you in a sec. Okay, and just like that we are done with all of the jobs. So let's quickly see how they did. I'm gonna go from the top down finishing with the hulls. So this one succeeded, excellent. This one also succeeded. So we've got two blueprints there. Uh, we can check as they come in. That we have 112 run and 124 run fuel catalyst blueprint. That one also succeeded. Oh, we're getting very lucky. That's. <laughs> but maybe we're burning all of our luck before we get to the hulls. That's a lot of success. There we go. So that's what happens if it doesn't work. You get a failed. That's unfortunate that we failed on the same one. Um, which means we don't have the covert um, subsystem, covert reconfiguration blueprint. So I'll need to set another one of them off and hope that works. And then the hulls also failed on the expensive stuff and we did get a success. But that's upsetting that that one failed. That's 50 million gone. <laughs> but here we have 24 run Tango blueprint. Um, okay, so I'm going to set um, the armor off again, um, but I'll see you guys back in the wormhole with our blueprints. See you there. Okay, so I'm back in wormhole. Um, I am ready to do some manufacturing. Right? I've come back in, I've brought my blueprints in, I'm ready to go. Let's Let's get cracking. Um, again, please ignore my hangers. I <laughs> don't bother with that much stuff. This is my in industrial stuff. I don't really bother with organization. But um, that to one side. <clears throat> I've got my blueprints we um, created. You'll see as well here are some I made earlier. Um, but okay, I've got my Tengu blueprint. Let's build a Tengu, shall we? Um, not quite as easy as that, as it as it turns out. So, if we open up the Tengu blueprint, as you've seen here, um, there is one item that you might already be familiar with. Um, the REM uh, used quite heavily in uh, manufacturing, possibly just Tech Two, but you get these different items um, uh, 
uh, are popping up a lot in, in manufacturing so specifically in this case for the Tengu we want Starship tech um, but you can just get the blueprint and build that from minerals that is easy enough so I'm not going to go into any more detail with that uh, just go get yourself some minerals get yourself the blueprint these BPOs are unbelievably cheap on the market and you can just build the RAM for no value um, there really is no return so either so if you wanted to um, if you want to do everything from scratch yourself like me then of course build them but uh, you will actually lose money manufacturing these yourself um, obviously these are just estimated values and with a zero percent material efficiency but if we're talking 95,000 here even if you're at 10 percent um, that's only going to drop it to 85 um, or slightly higher and it's only 62 so you're going to lose money if you build these just be aware of that um, so but if we go back to the Tengu you've then got these items which um, if you've not done tech 3 manufacturing you've probably not seen before so this is if you're going to take uh, tech 3 manufacturing seriously this is probably where you want to start considering a spreadsheet because the build path starts getting a bit complicated I'm not going to bother with spreadsheets and stuff for this video because each to their own in my opinion um, but so we can just run things down here inefficiently um, but yes so I go okay I'm in my industry window open this up for the first time I need emergent neurovisual interface I need four of them to be able to run two runs of this blueprint which is uh, what I want to do I like doing things in two runs personally just because the build time is um, it's pretty long for one ship so if we go over to one ship this is with um, an Astros not Astros sorry a Raitaru um, roll bonus so the 15% um, I've got maxed out skills <laughs> uh, no implants um, but you know that's pretty heavily bonused and it still takes uh, over one and a half days to build one hull so I like to build two just to get to make sure the like I can go do other stuff um, but back to this um, yes okay so I need four emergent neuro interfaces let's find out what we need to do to get those because these are listed as components which are only needed for as you can see here tech 2 tech 3 station or fuel block manufacturing and these ones are all specifically tech 3 so we'll click it okay there is a blueprint for it so you and this is true you can get uh, you can actually buy these uh, component blueprints on the market um, so th and they're not that expensive um, I won't be able to find out from here uh, but if I just very quickly check um, uh, Janice for you let's Janice uh, we should be able to just very quickly um, it's all going horribly wrong let's do it this way instead I want emergent new visual interface this one let's just copy paste Alright, it was a bad idea. <laughs> Janice isn't the place to look because um, you can't buy these in the market hubs, I don't think. Uh, let's just have a. Oh, we're gonna go, we've got NPC. There you go. So you can buy them for 10 million, um, these particular blueprints. And it's the same for uh, all of them. So if I. Let's just pick a different one do the same thing 10 million um, so each of these BPOs cost 10 million and I think they are worth investing in um, if you have the have the cash um, you want to get the BPOs for each of the Tengu items so for each each one of these um, but so yep yeah, once you bought that I'm not gonna again I'm not gonna mention that here, uh, I'm not gonna go into detail of how you do that here 
but once you've got the BPOs, you'll want to research them so that you get good value for money. Um, and then you end up with emergent neurovisual interface blueprint copies here. And we know we want four from our Tengu um, job. So what do I need to make four emergent neural interfaces, neural interfaces? Whatever these things are. <laughs> so here you see uh, salvage materials. Um, the only time you will use salvage materials in manufacturing um, outside of Tech 3 is uh, rigs. Tech 1 and Tech 2 rig manufacturing. Um, they uh, for Tech 1 and Tech 2 rig manufacturing, you use um, ordinary salvage. So or, um, salvage from rats you might find in high sec or anywhere in case space. Uh, and if you want the Tech 2 salvage, that's from um, faction ships, uh, faction rats and things. Um, for Tech 3 manufacturing, the salvage it all comes from sleeper rats in wormhole space. So this specific item, the emergent neural, neurovisual interface, has these funny-looking um, like pyramids. Um, but they come from, uh, and uh, I'll just go back to another example as well. So just again, this is why you want your spreadsheet. But if we go back to the Tengu, and we go, okay, neurovisual output analyzer, also need four. We go and find my neurovisual output analyzer blueprint. Have four runs. Um, this yellow loot, yellow salvage, is what you would expect sleeper salvage to look like. Expect, for want of a better phrase. Um, if you will hear um, people talk about blue loot from sa from sleepers, which is the like effectively the bounty. Um, I'll touch on that in other videos. Uh, but then they'll also talk about yellow loot, which is the salvage materials. And the reason they call it yellow loot is the items all have this sort of like yellow hue behind them. The exceptions being um, the build path for the emergent neurovisual interface. These are you get these in exactly the same way as yellow loot. They are yellow loot. They just haven't got this yellow hue. Um, so yes, this is all done via sleeper salvage. Um, you can get sleeper salvage by running any sleeper combat sites or sleeper data hacking and relic sites. So um, there was obviously the Rattlesnake running C3, um, but I'll also put a link up here for Rattlesnake um, running a C4 combat site. Um, this is how I get all of my salvage. Uh, you farm blue loot from sleeper rats, make all your money, but then I go out and salvage it all so that I can do tech 3 manufacturing in the background. So you'll see some videos where people say, hey, it's not really worth salvaging sleeper wrecks. They're not that high value. That is true. It's definitely more um, more efficient to keep ratting and go keep harvesting that blue loot. Um, unless you're going to do Tech 3 manufacturing, then you need it. So that's where this comes from. Um, and that's a raw material. So if I, you know, if you click it here, if it wasn't a raw material, it would take you through to the next phase. This is a raw material. It's just straight up salvage. But then we've also got the second input material, which are reaction materials. So now we've got another whole industry chain to go and do. Um, I've obviously got some built up here already because I've, I've run this, so I've got some stockpiles. But um, that's not the purpose of this video. I'm not going to use my stockpiles. We're going to go and do it from end to end. So this is where your spreadsheet will come in. If we want to build our Tengu. Every single one of these requires reaction materials and different ones, different makeups, as you can see. So however you want to do it, you will need to record how much of each reaction material you need. Um, I'll probably in a spreadsheet but, or you can just make notes, you know, use the um, notepad tool or something, right? Um, so, 
I will do that um, now. I will be going through and making note of how many of each material I need. But make sure you do it from your BPC, your fully researched BPC. If you do it just clicking through like this, it defaults to the original BPO, which is 00. zero. So you're going to want to make sure you go through your BPCs to make sure you've got the um, the actual requirements because this is where the material efficiency comes into play is on, on these materials, on the reaction materials. Um, and so then, now we know we've got to go do, we can't hit our build yet, we've got to go and create some reaction materials. That's the next step. What makes up reaction materials? How do we do this? Again, just have a little click through. This is a different path. We've now left manufacturing. These aren't BPCs. These aren't blueprints anymore. They aren't manufacturing. We are now down at the end in reactions. So these are completely different items. Um, you go and buy these on the market. It's the only place you can get them. I mean, some people will sell them on contract if they don't need them anymore. Um, but you just go get the original reactions from the market. Uh, they range between, I think, 10 and 20 million per reaction-ish. <coughs> um, and specifically, you're looking for the ones that are uh, relevant to this case. And they all use wormhole gas, or fullerite gas. So, in this case, if we're looking at PPD fullerene fibers, we need input minerals, which we will mine. We need, um, um, but like this, that's probably the one thing I'm not going to link a video to. I think you probably know how to do mining. Um, we need fullerite gas of various flavors and varieties. Um, for a Tengu hull build, you need every um, fullerite gas type that exists. And we also need fuel blocks, which I haven't done a video on how to make fuel blocks. I'm probably not going to because um, I don't build it myself. So if I were to do a video on it, uh, I would be setting up like a one-time operation just for the video. Um, it's not something I can do sustainably in my wormhole. So I probably won't do a video on that. Um, but you can definitely find a video on gas harvesting right up here in the top corner. I've got a few, um, so I might link a couple as we go through with the different gases. But I'm going to move over to my other facility where I can do reactions, um, and we'll have a list of everything we need to create our reaction materials. I'll see you over there in a second. <laughs> 